Dive into God's Word. Dig a little deeper. Discover the Bible's message for you today. Pathway to Paradise Ministries presents Deeper, your daily Bible study with Dr. Tim Rumsey and Pastor David Salazar. Hello, and thank you for joining us today. You are listening to Deeper, your daily Bible study. My name is Tim Rumsey, and again, Pastor Salazar is uh, unable to join us today, but he will be back soon, and we'll look forward to uh, his participation as usual. Our lesson today is titled Lessons from the Past. We'll continue through the prayer found in the uh, book of Nehemiah, chapter 9. And as always, we'll be looking for lessons for us today as they looked at the past and as we look at our past and see how God has led us. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are the God of history as well as the God of the future. That means that you are also the God right now, today, and that our hands today are in, our lives today are in your hands. And so we thank you for this assurance. We ask for your Holy Spirit's guidance and leading as we study your word today. As always, Lord, we pray that we could understand not just the history here, but the lessons that you have for us today to make a practical difference in our lives now. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. As Ezra uh, continued in this chapter leading the Jews in prayer, he begins to review God's leading on them in the past and to review Israel's response to God. Now, unfortunately, the history was a sad one with Israel returning in gratitude and rebellion for God's faithfulness. However, important lessons could still be learned from this history, and theirs was always the opportunity for a new start. And of course, that opportunity is ours as well. And so let's look at how um, Ezra's prayer unfolds as we continue through Nehemiah chapter 9. Beginning in verse 9, Ezra begins to recount some of the history uh, of the exodus from Egypt especially. I'll read a few of these verses, Ezra, Maya, uh, Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 9. He says, And we did see the affliction, thou didst see the affliction of our fathers in Egypt, and heard their cry by the Red Sea, and showed signs and wonders upon Pharaoh, and on all his servants, and on all the people of his land. For thou knew that they dealt proudly against them. So thou didst get thee a name as it is this day. And thou didst divide the sea before them, so that they went through the midst of the sea on the dry land, and their persecutors thou threw into the deeps as a stone into the mighty waters. Moreover, thou led them in the day by a cloudy pillar, and in the night by a pillar of fire, to give them light in the way wherein they should go. Thou came down also upon Mount Sinai, and spoke with them from heaven, and gave them judgments, and true laws, and good statutes, and commandments." And made known unto them thy holy Sabbath, and commanded them precepts, and statutes, and laws by the hand of Moses thy servant, and gave them bread from heaven for their hunger, and brought forth water for them out of the rock for their thirst, and promised them that they should go in to possess the land which thou had sworn to give them. That's Nehemiah chapter 9, verses 9 through 15. Now, at this point in Israel's history, this is after the 70 years of captivity. Israel has been a nation uh, for centuries by this point. And there was much history that Ezra could have drawn on uh, to speak of God's leading and his providence for his people. But he focuses on this early history as God leads them out of Egypt, uh, these uh, you know, sequence of amazing miracles as the plagues fall on Egypt, as they walk through the waters of the Red Sea, you know, the pillar of fire and the cloud that led them through the wilderness, the giving of the Ten Commandments, uh, the manna from heaven and the water from the rock that God provided in the desert. This is the part of Israel's history that Ezra focuses on. And the question I, that came to my mind as I was reading through this is, you know, why was it that Ezra focused on these particular stories from Israel's past? You know, again, there were hundreds of years that he could have chosen from. And I suppose the answer is not a difficult one, uh, at least one of the answers. You know, these events reveal a continuous string of miracles uh, of God's love and power for his people. And if the people were to be reminded and convicted of God's continuing care for them, this part of their history would probably be the best suited to encourage and strengthen them. Now, I doubt any of us have walked through um, 
water like the Israelites did through the Red Sea. I doubt any of us have drunk water that just started bubbling up from a rock. Probably none of us have eaten bread that fell from heaven. Um, And yet, that does not mean that we don't have experiences and evidences of God's care and leading in our lives today. And so here's my encouragement for you as, as we contemplate this part of their prayer. What has God done in your past, in your history, in your uh, relationship with Him? What has He done for your family? Uh, certainly, God has done something for you in the past, probably many, many things. And it is well for us to remember these, to not forget them, to write them down, uh, to erect, in a sense, you know, altars of remembrance such as God's people did so often in the Old Testament, that when they or somebody else would come by that spot, they would know that God, the God of heaven, had done something of significance here in this spot. And faith uh, to God, maybe gratitude, would be um, uh, drawn forth from the people as they remember what he had done. Uh, You remember that when Israel walked through the Jordan River, Joshua commanded that 12 stones be carried from the riverbed and set up uh, as a pillar, as a monument on the side of the river there to remind the people, uh, you know, forever, as long as that pillar stood, that this is the spot where God had worked this miracle. And again, you know, we we probably don't erect literal pillars like this in our lives today, but it would be well for us to have something, you know, it could be a, a book, uh, something to remind you of what God has done in your life. I went through this exercise several years ago. I've done it several times. And, um, you know, we all probably remember a few of the big events, of the, you know, the, the really memorable times where we remember that God has, has worked for us, or we've felt the presence of God. I'll share one with you just briefly. I was um, in college. It was the year between my sophomore and junior year in college, and I went to um, a small uh, summer camp to be a counselor. And um, discovered very quickly that counseling wasn't really my cup of tea, but here I was. I had signed on for the entire summer. (laughs) And so I made the best of it, but about halfway through the summer, my attitude was really slipping in a bad direction. And so I think it was a Wednesday on my day off. I um, hopped in my car. This was up in the Black Hills and um, drove a few miles to a, a trailhead nearby and I got out of my car and started walking. And uh, of course, as luck would have it, already in a bad attitude that day, I sprained my ankle trying to jump over a creek. I landed sideways on a wet rock, and that only made my attitude worse. Well, I had walked about an hour and a half, and um, all of a sudden a storm came barreling up on me that I had failed to notice before this. And now I'm stranded out a mile, uh, an hour and a half from my car, nowhere to hide. I had just entered a... a uh, campground. It was a very primitive one, and the only place to hide it was an outhouse. And uh, with the thunder f- f- uh, booming and the lightning flashing, and uh, I think there was even a little bit of hail starting to fall, I made a beeline for that outhouse, and it stunk too much to, to sit inside, so I curled up under the eaves of this outhouse and waited out the storm. And as I sat there, even with this storm raging around me and all of you know these emotions of discontent and so forth, feeling sorry for myself going on inside. As I sat there still, it's as if I suddenly heard the voice of God. And I'm not saying it was an audible voice, but I, you know the Holy Spirit finally got a hold of me. And uh, I'd actually put in my backpack, I think, a Bible and... Um, Patriarchs and Prophets, and I started reading about the story of Elijah after Mount Carmel when he went running um, away from Queen Jezebel. And if you remember the story, he runs for 40 days and nights, a lot more than an hour and a half, and he's feeling sorry for himself, he's afraid, and he goes to the mouth of a cave and a great storm passes by. And at the end of this experience, God speaks to Elijah in a still small voice, and he assures him that uh, God is still with him and that he has not been forsaken. Well, to to cut my story short, uh, by the end of my experience, uh, I felt the peace of God 
um, in a way that I rarely had before that. And, you know, to be honest, it still stands out as a unique and special experience for me. And so now I can tell people, you know, I, I met God under an outhouse, <laughs> under the eaves of an outhouse. And, uh, you know, that's truly uh, where I was. You know, I was feeling sorry for myself. And, and here God found me. And that has always been in my mind as a lesson from the past that um, you know, God is there. He has not forsaken us and, and he will be with us. So what has God done in your past? Um, you, you may have an experience like that. And um, it is well for us to remember these times, whether they're big or small, how God has worked for us, how he's revealed himself to us. Because a day will come, and maybe you're in that day right now where you need to remember what God has done for you. As Ezra continues his prayer in verses 16 through 18, he reminds the people how they and their ancestors had responded in unfaithfulness and rebellion to God. Uh, Verse 16 says, But they and our fathers dealt proudly and hardened their necks and hearkened not to thy commandments and refused to obey. Neither were mindful of thy wonders that thou didst among them, but hardened their necks and in their rebellion appointed a captain to return to their bondage. But thou art a God ready to pardon, gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and you forsook them not. What a beautiful promise. What a beautiful reminder of the character of God, that even when we are unfaithful, even when we rebel, God still does not throw in the towel and say, forget it, I'll stop working for you, I'll stop working for your family. There is always the opportunity to repent. There is always the opportunity to confess and to return to God. And this is, of course, the promise that Ezra gives here. Verse 19, Ezra goes on, Yet thou and thy manifold mercies forsook them not in the wilderness. The pillar of the cloud departed not from them by day to lead them in the way, neither the pillar of fire by night to show them light and the way wherein they should go. Friends, God will show you the way that you should go. Whatever the situation is, whatever the challenge is, that you may be facing right now in your life, God will reveal the way. Now, it's not always in the timing that we wish, but God does promise that he will show us if we just continue waiting on him in faith. He led the Israelites for 40 years through the wilderness. He'll do the same for you today. Verse 20 says, Thou gave also thy good spirit to instruct them, and withheld not thy manna from their mouth, and gave them water, For their thirst. Yea, forty years didst thou sustain them in the wilderness, so that they lacked nothing. Friends, the same promise is for us today. God will see that we lack nothing that we need as we put our trust in Him. Their clothes waxed not old, and their feet swelled not. Moreover, He gave us them kingdoms and nations, and didst divide them into corners, so that they possessed the land. And friends, God has promised that he will bring us into the land. He has promised not uh, an earthly place, but a heavenly possession, a, a better land, the one that Abraham was looking for. And so my encouragement to you today, friends, is to put your eyes on the land that God has promised, the, uh, the new Jerusalem, a, an eternal home with our Savior. And uh, do, not, um, do not fall to discouragement like I did that day many years ago. But remember how God has led you in the past and allow that to give you confidence and faith that he will continue his leading today and tomorrow. Well, we are out of time today. Uh, I thank you for joining us. I hope that you've been blessed by the time spent in God's word. And I hope that you'll join us again tomorrow as we continue working our way through the lessons this week in studying God's leading of his people in the past and in the time of Ezra and Nehemiah. God bless. Deeper is a production of Pathway to Paradise Ministries. For more Bible study resources, including books, DVDs, and study guides, visit pathwaytoparadise.org or call toll-free 855-HIS-TRUTH. To support this ministry with your tax-deductible contribution, visit pathwaytoparadise.org or call toll-free 855-HIS-TRUTH. That's 855-447-8788.